Hello, my name is Trina. I'm a medical cannabis patient. I partake of cannabis on a regular basis for PTSD, arthritis in both my knees and ankles, social anxiety, and a few other conditions you can learn more about through watching the previous shows on this channel. This is the Productive Cannabis Connoisseur, a channel dedicated to medical cannabis patients and adults 18 and over. So I hope you watch part one. <clears throat> and this is part two. And I've been reading this article about the difference between men and women when they partake in cannabis. Um, I did a video about similar to this, but it was like more so trying to get to the bottom of whether or not women smoke more than men do. So, and if you had caught, didn't catch part one, please do. <laughs> so what I've been smoking on is a, actually a joint which I get I lost in here. <laughs> lost in the Poke Bowl of ashtray. But anyway, pseudo Poke Bowl. <laughs> but yeah, I've been smoking this joint and it's uh, made with a uh, sugar shake, which, I, which I've been showing you guys for the last few weeks. <clears throat> so I'm going to have a talk of this and finish up reading this article and then give you my opinion on what I think of the things that they said in this article and see if there's any factual things in there that I can pull out. We'll see. <laughs> sometimes there is with articles that I read on this channel and sometimes they're not. So. And I want to bring forth the, the articles that that are like lacking so I can point that out. So we can see how far we've gotten as far as research and acceptance of research as far as cannabis goes. So. <clears throat> All right, that let's see, let me grab grab my water here. All right. So where were we? I figure out where I was. <laughs> if I reread something, <laughs> don't be upset. You can go to the actual website that I'll put up and you can read it yourself. <clears throat> okay, I'm just going to go on to reading this part. If I skip something, like I said, you can go. I'll have a link in the description below. So while going through the scientific literature on the subject, Ziva Cooper, an associate professor of clinical neurobiology at Columbia University, decided it was time to do something about this. When it comes to ca cannabis and cannabinoids, there's been a lot of evidence from animal studies showing that there are profound, difference, profound differences between males and females, <coughs> Excuse me. especially in the area of pain relief. These findings piqued my interest in studying this in humans, she explains. Or is that arrow? Okay. Focusing on pain relief, she tested how differences in pain sensitivity and tolerance difference differ among male and female cannabis smokers. In 2016, it's a placebo study, controlled study. Cooper and Kali participants who were already regular, I think I read all this. Immerse their hand in cold water. Yeah, I read all this stuff. Okay. So we can skip all that. Sorry. <clears throat> oh, that's where I left off. I was talking about when there's part of this article where they're saying when they stop taking the drug, withdrawal symptoms also appear to be stronger and they're more likely to experience anxiety and nausea. Saying that women will experience it more profoundly than men. I'm not convinced that that's true <clears throat> because they're sensitive men as well they're, as well as they're sensitive women but men are just um, only seen in one way as just the strong like or what people uh, attribute with being strong you know not showing emotion <laughs> you know that's be seen as being strong for a man not to show emotion all the time and <clears throat> that poker face on, you know, all the time. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, anyway. 
What remains unclear is what biological mechanisms are driving all these differences in the first place. What is the mediating what is mediating these differences? Is it because they are there are differences in the brain's cannabinoid receptors, Cooper wonders. Is it because the drug is metabolized differently or perhaps differences are driven by hormones? Although it's too early to say, <clears throat> her review makes a compelling case that the met metabolic metabolic breakdown of cannabis in the body may differ between males and females. This may have an impact at the molecular level, regulating long-term sex differences, in particular the increased tolerance seen in females relative to males. Men and women also seem to have different preferences when it comes to consume... Okay, this is all cut off, looks like. The article is getting cut off. This is okay. <clears throat> Men and women also seem to have different preferences when it comes to the way they consume cannabis, too, with women more likely to turn to edibles. <laughs> they haven't a clue. <laughs> Exploring how the root of administration may change the effects, the drug will then also prove cru crucial in the future. <clears throat> Studies will also have to move have to move on from looking at the effects on pain to studying other conditions. As the evidence suggests, women are more likely to take medical cannabis to help treat mental issues such as anxiety and depression. Answering all these questions will be difficult in particular because cannabis research receives little funding and is still strictly regulated, so designing rigorous studies is not an easy feat. A lot of variables have to be have to been controlled oh, another error there. Have to be controlled. From the doses given to participants to the method of consumption, the type of pain patients may be feeling, or other relevant social factors. <clears throat> if you compare male and female pain patients or cannabis-dependent users, any sex differences you find may be confounded by environmental factors such as social influences on medical or recreational drug use, says Tom Freeman, senior academic fellow at King's College London. These challenges explain why so little medical cannabis research is still taking place despite the recent policy shifts <clears throat> and more specifically why investigating women's responses has only just started to be seen as a priority. For researchers in the field, the situation cannot change soon enough. Things have to move. We need to do quality research and to include females' response from the get-go. Otherwise, we will always conclude that there is limited evidence for the medical use of cannabis. In Docho says, how can we use cannabis more safely? Who's likely to benefit and who is not? Seeing the growing number of medical ca cannabis users, including women, these are pressing questions we cannot ignore anymore. <clears throat> yeah, I agree with that. Um, yeah, I definitely agree with that. And what I don't agree with is a lot of the assumptions that are made that women smoke more than men. Or that women, um, if they don't have it, if they're without cannabis, they're affected a lot more profoundly because we're more sensitive. <clears throat> and like what I was saying before, it's not just women that are sensitive. Men are sensitive too. Uh, some men show their sensitivity outwardly more than others. Some men, men are sensitive, but they hide that aspect of themselves and keep that to themselves. So, oh. Okay, guys, I'm back. I just had to see my husband off for work. Um, but yeah, um, let's go down to ground level and talk more about this article. <clears throat> because... Uh, yeah, of course, more research needs to be done. But do people, people care, really? So let me put you on pause again. Okay, we're back in the dark again. <laughs> Just like in part one. But anyway, <clears throat> yeah, I don't think there's a difference between men and women partaking in cannabis as far as sensitivity level goes. Because I don't think all men are, like, um, the same. Just like not all women are the same. Some women can't handle a lot of cannabis, some can. Um, and it does all tie into um, tolerance. 
if you've been smoking a strong strain for like for several months on end <clears throat> your tolerance has gone up and yeah you do need a stronger strain probably but that's not a big deal and I don't think that um, women eat more edibles than men eat I don't think you can do that you can't really separate the two like that when it comes to cannabis <clears throat> All it is really pretty much is a tolerance thing. How much, you know, your body is used to. You know, so some of these articles are lacking and this article admitted that they're lacking because there's not enough research. And yet again, they're gonna go to do research on rats and we're not rats. So we're not, we don't need to rely on that, you know, for our research. We don't need to rely on monkeys or any other animal that we think is similar to us. We're a different being on this planet. We're not a rat, we're not a monkey, we're not a rabbit, <clears throat> we're none of the above. So stop doing these experiments, these harsh experiments on these animals and just do it on us. You've already, the government's already been experimenting on us as it is by putting preservatives, colorings, and flavorings into our fucking food. You know, you go to buy a bag of bread, you think it's wholesome and good. We eat bread, but if you read the ingredients, it's a whole long list of over 20 ingredients. Do you need 20 ingredients in a loaf of bread? There's like colorings, there's flavorings, there's chemicals, and all kinds of shit that does need to be in a loaf of bread. So I'm just saying, the government's been interfering with our health and our wealth and our well-being since the beginning of time um, and affecting us in such a way to where we forget uh, what's important. And what's important is in trying to separate the sexes and trying to see how much different we are all the time. <clears throat> you know, relegate the only only women are allowed to cry. Men have to stay strong, what they, what people consider to be strong and stoic and um, not having some sort of support system and them being the foundation and support system all the time. These are just stereotypical ways of living yet again, but just dealing with the different, the two genders of male and female. And as far as cannabis partaking goes, no, I don't think the women eat more edibles than they smoke. I mean, you see me. <laughs> and <clears throat> it's just that it's not, it's not commonplace. That's why it's hard for them to also like, feel like they can do research about it because of the legalities of it all. And because it's not at the point where people are smoking, walking down this, like a lot of people walking down the street smoking a joint. You won't see that. It's it's rare that you see just one person, at least around here. If you do see it around here, <laughs> um, they're not being they're being kind of like they're hiding it, you know. And it's not like it's like someone smoking a commercial tobacco cigarette with no, you know, repercussions or no feeling like feeling like they're gonna get caught by the police because it's legal and it's sold in in stores. So. Um, yeah, I don't think there's a difference between a male cannabis partaker and a female part cannabis partaker. I mean, I've met both, <laughs> you know, and there's no difference. It's just personality is what it is, I think. And depending on the condition of the person and what their soul is all about, you know. It could be a man and a female that are, have the exact same amount of cannabis consumption and can have the same amount of sensitivity towards themselves and others. So, I mean, these are broad statements and broad statements are always used when it comes to um, bringing forth information about cannabis, you know, <laughs> because they're not really digging deep enough and they're saying they're not getting enough funding for research. So, and so they resort to rats, you know, <laughs> Yeah, I guess that's the cheapness of it. It's cheaper to use a rat than it is to use a human.
Oh, this is good. What time are we at? Okay, so I can't even see it. Huh? <laughs> Do look at this the uh, time on this. Okay, it's hard to see because it's, it's in like, white lettering. And it's a white background, and now it's dark again. Here. I'm sorry. <laughs> Anyway, I'm not going to make this part two too much longer, but I wanted to give you my opinion of this article. Of course, it's lacking and it's vague and it makes assumptions and <clears throat> it doesn't really bring forth uh, much of anything that I don't already know, really. You know, and I think it just comes down to an individual thing, whether you're male or female. Um, some people have certain needs. And if you're using it medicinally, which I feel like everybody is, okay, you can say recreational all you want, but it's a medicine. Medicines are there to cure, medicines are there to help heal. So this is yet another medicine that does that, that functions in that way. So um, I just feel like it's all medical. <laughs> it's all medicine, no matter what. You know, you sitting down with your buddies after a long day of work and you're stressed out about that day and you're still thinking about all that shit that happened in your day at the job and then you light up a joint and share it amongst you and your buddies or a buddy or whatever or by yourself and then you're like feeling relieved of any tension and stress that's medicinal that's healing right there so for those of those people that are just like, no, I'm not medical, I'm recreational. Realize what you're saying, maybe, you know? Just saying, I mean, some people just say, oh, I'm recreational. Because, because they can smoke a lot of cannabis in one sitting, you know? Like, do videos where you uh, smoke, like, bong rip after bong rip. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I don't shun people that make videos like that. I think it's a liberating thing to put out there on the internet because cannabis smoking has been judged for so long it's just smoking uh just smoking cannabis has been judged for so long it has and it still is <clears throat> and they equivalent equivalent <laughs> they see um smoking a joint as being equal to smoking a tobacco commercial cigarette. A lot of people do still. And that's just amazing. The ignorance that people still have. It's just it's astounding to me. So I was hearing a dog or something. I was trying to see if it wasn't coming in the back of my gate here. Anyway. But yeah, I... What more can you say about that? I don't think there's a difference. I mean, I've smoked with men, a lot of men, actually, and a lot of them were as sensitive as I am, <laughs> and they could feel the nuances and the feelings involved with the cannabis, and they reported anxiety relief and stress relief and pain relief, so, I mean, so that... The, this, you know, proves nothing. You can't make this broad statements like that. <laughs> it doesn't apply to this herb. It definitely doesn't. Canvas isn't specifically made for a female or specifically created for a male. It's specifically created for both male and female. So, there you go. <laughs> <clears throat> you know, my husband used to think that I smoked more than him, but that's only because I'm at home and I'm working from home. And so he only gets that perspective. And but then he smokes like in the middle of the night when he can't go to sleep. He'll smoke when he gets home at night and then he'll smoke in the middle of the night and then he'll smoke in the morning. So um, there's no way of tallying. Well, you can if you wanted to tally up and measure up how much each one of us smokes. to see if it adds up to be more than one or the other. You could do that, but why bother? You know, does it matter? Why are they even doing, why do they even want to do a study like that about if males or females 
if the male smokes more than the female or vice versa. Why do they care about that? So, let's see what time we're at here. Alright, 20 minutes. Okay, I'm going to. I'm getting low on my joint. And um, I'm going to wrap up this two part video. <clears throat> I hope that you catch part one. And I hope that you enjoyed it. And I hope that you share the videos that I make on this channel with your friends and family because we definitely need to demystify cannabis so that it's more readily available to people that would give it a try as a medicine because it's one of the few out there that don't have a ton of side effects you know it's it's just sad I mean there's a lot of people that take a lot of things that have a lot of side effects to them and it's sad and it shouldn't be like that for us on this planet so that's all I gotta say about that <laughs> uh, thanks for joining me today thanks for uh, subscribing to my channel thank you for the likes and shares and thank you for your kind comments leave your comments down below and let me know what you think about this article or what I've been talking about um, is there do you think there's differences between males and females when they partake of cannabis have you witnessed that yourself I haven't um, when I'm around males that partake in cannabis as opposed to females that take partake in cannabis I've had the same experience the same energy um, it feels like you're in the same energy field when people are are being like in a smoking like a smoke circle and partaking in similar strain passing around a joint pressing around a pipe <clears throat> end up blending your energies together and it feels like it becomes really um, like an experience where you have shared ideas and can totally communicate with each other a lot easier so that's been my experience with smoking with either males or females either way it doesn't matter it's all down to a personality that's I think that's where we all differ when it comes down to it yes there is a difference between males and females on physical level I know all that and internal level yes I get that yeah but when it comes to partaking in cannabis I don't think you can really separate the two you know and say one smokes more than the other or one prefers to eat edibles more than the other you know it that that's just we should we should be spending our time on better research than this this kind of research is irrelevant I feel like it is it's irrelevant yes each and every one of us as a different sex male or female are experience the world differently because men are not men are not experiencing a menstrual period every month they're not bleeding every month like that so they're not experiencing a female body in that way they're not giving birth to a baby because they can't get pregnant you know, those are di that's a difference. Um, women don't have a penis, so we can't experience that part of the anatomy. We're we're created in in the way that we are, so we won't experience that. And that's a whole nother experience that I have no connection to and I can't relate to. So yes, men and women are different in that way, on an anatomical level, and internal how we're uh, put together. But as far as sensitivity and being connected with this plant and how much of it we smoke or how less of it we smoke, I don't think it is determined by our sex, whether we're female or male. So there you go. You got my full, my full uh, viewpoint on this matter because I feel like we're trying to separate males and females way too much. I'm not saying that females and males have to be exactly the same. I'm saying that males are sensitive as well as females. It, and when you say sensitive, it doesn't mean that you have the male has to wear a fuzzy pink sweater and and wear makeup. <laughs> That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying sensitive, like empathic. You know, feeling other people's pain and trying to help them if they can. That kind of deal. That's what I'm talking about. And it's not just relegated just to females. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. 
That seems to happen a lot throughout the years where they're just trying to separate males and females so that we're always battling against each other. And we shouldn't be. We should be working with each other, working with each other's strengths, you know, and coming together and not like being at odds and, oh, I don't like you because you don't go through what I go through. You know, that's bullshit. So it doesn't have to be that way with cannabis either. So <clears throat> whether you're male or you're female, it doesn't matter how much you smoke or how little you smoke. So here you go. Long-winded answers. <laughs> But yeah, you get the point. I hope you do. And if you're just starting out smoking cannabis, don't even listen to all this BS. Uh, listen to what you feel, what your soul is telling you. Because I feel like when cannabis found me, <clears throat> it was my soul's journey. It was part of my soul's journey. Some people go on a soul's, their soul's journey has nothing to do with cannabis, so they'll never have any you know, nudge towards it or anything like that. I've had nudges towards it for quite a while before I even tried it. <laughs> and I just kind of ignored those nudges because I wasn't ready at the time. So cannabis finds you and sees when you're ready. <laughs> and when I found, when she found me for completely, I was ready. So cheers to all of you. Thanks for joining me. Feel free to check out my bit shoot and my Black Junction TV channel because YouTube terminated this channel, The Productive Cannabis Connoisseur, for three months straight. So check out that channel in case that happens again. And you can subscribe to both of those channels. Um, also, um, you can be a patron on my Patreon at www.patreon.com slash darkmoondoll. You can also check out my artwork on my Etsy shop at www.darkmoondoll.etsy.com. And I'll try to remember to get the links in the description below. I'm having more and more links as the years go by. <laughs> Just can't keep up. It's too much. Too many social media networks and shit. But, uh, it helps, though. It helps with people keeping in contact with each other. People being able to reach out and talk to each other from all over the world. So I do enjoy that aspect of social media. Um, Social media can be okay if it's used in the right way. <laughs> you know. Alrighty, guys. Brightest blessings to you all. And I'll see you soon. And please do catch part one. <laughs>